today I will teach you how to create your first Android app. So we will be using app builders with this. So there will be no coding. Uh, we will not code because we, will, we are going to use app builders. Okay. So I will teach you some stuff about app builders. Okay. So most app builders, they're very expensive. Okay. I will show you some examples later. And there are also some free app builders. But they're limited in functionality, which means um, it is hard to customize them. It is hard to um, create the app you want because they're limited in functionality. But don't worry because I will show you the best app builder. And it is free or very cheap. And it has a very good functionality. Okay, So I will show you some examples of app builders. I tried many app builders and this is what I found. So this is Appypy. This is an app builder and they have a free um they have a free plan, but you cannot publish the app in Google Play Store. Okay? So that sucks because you cannot publish in Google Play Store. And uh, but they also have a basic plan which costs $15 per month but the $15 per month is the price per app so for example you have 10 apps you will not pay $15 you will pay $150 because $15 times 10 equals $150 okay so I find that very expensive and also you you can only distribute it with Google Play Store if you cannot distribute it with Apple Apple Store or the Microsoft Store, so that is their um, basic plan. So next is Buildfire. This is another app builder. So they cost fifty three dollars per month, which I find very expensive, and they can only have uh, twenty thousand downloads. So for example, if you have an app and your app became very popular and there's fifty thousand downloads, then um, you need to upgrade to this, okay? Because this is only twenty thousand downloads. See, there's this professional plan is very expensive. It's one hundred thirty-four dollars per month, and it's one hundred thousand downloads. Okay, so um, I find that very expensive. So here's another app builder. It's Good Barber. Okay, so the price of Good Barber is thirty-two euros per month. So I find that very expensive. Actually, I've searched many, many, many app builders. And this is the trend. I find out that they're very expensive. Or if they're not expensive, um, they're very limited in functionality. So here's Andromo. Okay. Andromo has a free trial. But you can create one app only. And you cannot turn off the ads. Okay. So they have also a starter plan, which costs $8 per month, but you can create up to 50 apps only. Okay, another thing I don't like with Andromo is they build annually. Okay, so it means your payment is per year. Even if they say it's $8 per month here, I find that um, it's not really $8 per month, it's Eight eight dollars times twelve because there's twelve months in a year. I found out that it's actually ninety six dollars per year. Okay, they don't have a monthly plan; they only have a yearly plan. That is ninety six dollars per year. So you need to pay ninety six dollars if you want to have the starter plan, and that is only up to fifty apps. Okay, so I did not like that. I find that expensive. So the best app builder I found is Mobin Cube. Okay, so let's um, search in at Google. It's mobincube.com. Okay, so I will discuss with you the reasons why I like Mobin Cube. Okay, so let's just click here at the pricing section. Okay, so here are the plans of Mobin Cube. So they have a free plan. This is the starter plan, and you can create unlimited apps. Okay, you can create as much apps as you want. And there is unlimited space. 
So it means even if your app is very big, for example, it's 20 megabytes. And if you have um, 10 apps, that is 20 megabytes, that is 200 megabytes. Even if you reach 1 gig or 500 megabytes, it doesn't matter because you have unlimited space. Okay? And there's 500,000 push notifications. Okay, so if you're asking, um, is the free plan, can we publish it in Google Play Store? I will say yes. Okay? I already published in Google Play Store some apps that I created using Mobin Cube. Okay? You can also make money from Mobin Cube with this free starter plan. You can monetize this. Okay? So what is the catch? Why? Uh, what is the disadvantage of the free plan? So there is only one disadvantage for the free plan, and I will show you. It, I don't think it's a very big deal, but it depends on the person. So here are some apps that I created using Mobin Cube. Okay, you can see this clean eating and the puppy training. So let's check on that. The only disadvantage with the free plan is they have the Mobin Cube logo. Okay, they have the Mobin Cube intro, and I will show you later. Okay, it's still loading. Um, that is the only thing. But if you don't mind that there's a logo, then the um, free plan. Okay, so this is the logo I'm telling you. Okay. So that. Um, there's always a Mobin Cube logo with a free plan. But if you don't mind the Mobin Cube logo, then the free plan is for you. So I will discuss the standard plan. Okay, it costs nine dollars and ninety nine cents per month, and you can create unlimited apps, and there's also unlimited space. But there are one million push notifications, so there are more push notifications with the standard plan. Okay, so the only good thing about the starter plan is you can remove the ads. Okay, if you want, if you don't want the ads. But the ads are good. You know why? Because the ads is how you make money. Okay, so even if the free plan, the free plan has ads, you can make money with the free plan. Okay, so you have the choice to remove the ads. And you also have the choice to remove the Mobin Cube logo that I showed you earlier. Okay, so there are additional benefits here like uh, store optimization and cloud. Okay, so there... There's also the advanced plan, and it's $19.99 per month, and it's the same, unlimited apps, unlimited space, but there are more push notifications. You can also make money, and you can also remove the ads. You can also remove the Mobin Cube intro, and the good thing with the advanced plan is um, you get the Google Analytics, okay? And you can also, there's also an advanced notification clever tab. So this is if you're using the push notifications. And if you want a more advanced push notifications, then you should choose the advanced plan. Okay. So there's also the resell reseller plan. And the reseller plan is for um, people who want to... Um, make apps for other people for example a company okay so you're gonna get the mobin cube dashboard but it's not gonna say mobin cube okay you can use your own domain for this so that is the reseller plan if you want to resell mobin cube services all right so basically that's it and my recommendation is if you don't mind the mobin cube logo then you can choose the free um, the starter plan, but if you want to remove the logo, then the cheapest is the standard plan or the advanced plan. Okay, so that is all. Hi guys, so um, today I will teach you how to create a second type of navigation for your app. So, first we need to add another screen. So, let's go to screen tree, which is this icon. Okay, so now we need to add another screen so we have to click this plus sign and then type a new name for your screen and then click OK 
All right. So now um, let's click this icon and then click open. Okay. So now we will have to choose detail screen. Just click detail. All right. So I want to have a background color for this. So we'll do that by clicking screen properties, which is the third icon. Okay. One, two, three. And then we'll choose background screen, which is the third icon again from the top. So one, two, three. Okay, so now let's click background color. And click a background color. Okay, so I want this color. As you can see, the background color changed. And if you don't want a background color, we can add a background image. Okay, so let's remove the background color and add a background image. But we need to upload a background image. Okay, so here are some background images. Click check, and as you can see, the background image changed. Alright, but for this exercise, I just want a plain background color. So let's go back there and change it to a background color. Okay, so now we need to add a header bar. And we'll click that, do that by clicking on screen properties. Okay. And then click bar manager, which is the second um, icon. One, two. Okay. So this is bar manager. Let's click that. And then click the plus sign. And then let's name our bar. Okay. So now we need to click this icon. And then click edit. Okay, so we will now drag the table here because we will create our header bar. So I want to adjust the size of the cells. So the first cell will be 25%. Okay, click here and then go to width. All right, and there's a box here. Put 25%. And the second cell will be 75%. Okay, so now we need to add an image on the cells. So just drag the images, and then drag, okay? So I want to put an image on the first cell. So just click this, and then go down here, and then click Select. And then Upload an Image. So click Upload Resource, File, and then this is the image I want. So click Accept. And then uh, click the Check. Okay, so I want another image here, so click here, and then click Select, and then Upload Resource, File, and then click Accept. Okay, and then click the Check. Alright, so now we have a logo here, um, but I find this too big, so let's click that, Edit, and then let's make it smaller. And then let's... Um, align it to the center okay so I want a background um, color for this so let's just click that and then click background solid and then click the box and then I'll paste the color here okay so uh, we can assign an action for this so this button just click here and then click this button we'll assign an action here so will assign the back action. So here's the action and click this click back. So when you click this it will um, have the back action. So now let's X this. Let's exit. Okay so you can't see the header bar here yet. We have to add it manually. So let's go to the um, bar manager again. Okay and then uh, this is the header bar we created. So let's just drag that on top, okay? So now you can see the header bar is here. So now we will create a menu bar, okay? So just click the plus sign, and then let's name it menu bar. Okay, so now we have to click um, this icon, and then click edit. Okay, so now we'll be making a menu bar. Alright, so I want to drag this table here. Okay, so we want to have five cells. Okay, 
So now there are only two cells. We're going to add three more. One, two, three. And we want the cells to be 20% each. So let's just click this and let's change it to 20%. Let's change all of them. 20%. Okay. Okay, so now we will add some images on the cells. So just um, drag the images here. Okay, so now we will add the icons on the cells. Okay, so first cell, let's add here select, and then um, I want this icon. Second cell, select, upload resource, file. Then let's add another icon, accept. Okay, click check. And third cell, select, upload resource, file, accept. Then fourth cell, select, upload resource, file, accept. Okay, and the last cell, click select here, upload resource, file, accept, then click the check. Okay, so this is our header bar now, um, but I find this too big, so let's adjust the sizes. So click edit, let's make it um, 80%, then let's put it on the center alignment. Okay, let's do that for all of them. Center, 80%, center, 80%, center, center. Okay, so now we have to um, click the X sign here. And I want to um, put the bottom bar here. So you see it's still not here. We have to add it again. So I have to go to the uh, screen properties here, and then bar manager. Click bar manager. Okay. So you see the menu bar. We have to drag it here at the bottom. Okay. So now you can see it. Okay. So these are the menu items, and you can change these icons to any icon you want. And if you click this. Um, it will go to the screen you want, but I will teach you later how to do that. Alright, so we can add a, another image here. So let's put the separator first, and then click no line, and then add an image. Okay, so let's click select, click upload resource, file. Click accept. Or let me just find another image. Okay, click accept. And click the check. Okay, so now there's an image of a dog. Okay. But I want to make this a little bit smaller, so let's just adjust the size. And then put it on the center alignment. Okay. So now uh, this is uh, your home screen, your navigation menu. And these are your navigation menu items. And you can change the icons here to any icon you want. Okay. And we can also add another separator here. Okay. So that is how to create a second type of navigation menu. And later, I will teach you how to connect um, these icons to their respective screens. Hi guys! So today I will teach you where to get content for your app. So the first type of content you need is pictures. Okay. So the pictures need to be royalty free. 
you need to make sure that it is royalty free. It is very important because um, pictures have copyright. And if the owner finds that the, you are using their picture without their permission, then you might get in trouble. Okay, so you just can't do Google search and then just copy whatever um, picture you find. You can't do that. You need to make sure the pictures are royalty free. So I will show you where to find some royalty free pictures. And my number one resource for royalty free pictures is pixabay.com. Okay. So they're actually um, royalty free pictures that are paid, like Shutterstock, but this Pixabay, it's free, okay? This is royalty free and it will not cost you money, okay? So here at Pixabay, okay, uh, let's just um, open one of the pictures here. Okay, so you can see here there's the license of the picture here at the right side. It says, CCO Creative Commons, free for commercial use, no attribution required, okay? So it means that uh, it's okay for commercial use, it's okay if uh, you use it in a project that will make you money, okay? And no attribution required. It means that you do not have to credit the author, you do not have to link back or anything, okay? So here at Pixabay, um, you can search whatever um, kind of picture you want. For example, if I have a puppy training app, so I will look for dog. Okay, so here are some pictures. Okay, that is how you use Pixabay. Alright, so besides um, photos, they also have illustrations. Okay, so um, these photos and illustrations um, you can use this as a background image for your app or you can use it as a content as a picture for your content okay so besides illustrations they also have vector graphics and vector graphics are a type of um, image that if you stretch it and make it very big it still won't lose the quality because some pictures um, if you stretch it um, it will be pixelated because it is low quality but the vector it's okay if you make it as big as you want it will not lose quality okay so there's also videos here okay if you want to put videos in your app that's okay so uh, many many pictures here most of the pictures here at Pixabay they're CCO Creative Commons free for commercial use no attribution required okay because you can see uh, with other um, pictures, there's different kinds of licenses. And sometimes you have to link back to the author. You have to credit the author. Okay. So this it, Pixabay, there's no attribution required and it's free. Okay. So the next resource that um, you need for your app is icons and logos. Okay. I'll show you where to find some icons. Okay, so for us, the logos, uh, I already told you earlier, it's canva.com. Okay, you will find here many, many um, logo designs. And actually, Canva is very good because um, you can use it to make different kinds of graphics, such as social media, infographics, Pinterest graphics. If you want to make a Facebook app, Facebook post, you can even make um, book covers, okay? Book covers, and if you write for Wattpad, you can have a Wattpad book cover, a CD cover, okay? There's a lot of uh, business cards, okay? So canva.com, you can create a logo there, or um, you can create some icons. So as you can see here, there's many, many designs that you can choose, okay? Look at that. You can edit this. You can change the colors. You can change the um, font. You can add pictures. So there's a lot of customization here. Okay. So the next one resource that you need are icons. Okay. So icons are um, the little buttons. Okay. That um, you will put in your app. For example, back button. Okay, so I will show you where to find icons.
actually it's quite easy um you just type it google free icons png okay so let's um look here so um the icons that is required for um mobin cube is png okay there are different types of icons such as svg psd eps ai but we don't need that we only need the png okay so here are some icons okay for example um you have an app about christmas so you can use these icons as your menu items okay or there's also a different type of icons where you will use it for navigation okay or user interface icons here also is some examples of icons this is a social network logo icon okay so um most of these icons if you see for example let's um click this most of these icons you need to have attribution okay let's click this so we can see the license okay all right so it says flat icon basic license it is necessary to credit the author remember in pixabay we don't need to credit the author we don't need to do anything here you need to credit the author so let's click how to credit so how to credit uh, you need to attribute the icon to the author okay so how must I insert the attribution so you need to say that the icon was made by author blank from flaticon.com so you need to put this okay for websites you insert the attribution on the page of the icon so for printing, paste the attribution on the final work. So this is for apps, okay? For apps, place the attribution on the credits description page of the application. So since we're making apps, okay, this is what we need to do if we're going to use these icons. We need to place the attribution on the credits and description page of the application. Okay, so actually most of the icons here, um, you need to credit the author you need to attribute okay so another type of icon um, they usually call it the essential icon pack so let's just search that okay so this type of icon these are your navigational icons or your user interface icons okay so here we can see a back button you can see here and we can see an exit button this x the red x here it's an exit button and we can see um there this is the map button okay so you can add this to your app and this is the another map button okay so these are your user face interface icon and here's a share button so you can add this on the menu items of your app okay so that is how you um, get some icons so there are free and paid icons but um, you can all get for free and just attribute it to the author or depending on the license okay so the next um, content that we need for your app is um, articles okay so you need articles for your app um, and my recommendation for the articles is to um, find PLR articles or private label rights so what is private label rights okay private label rights is a license where the author sells most or all of the intellectual property rights to their work so what does that mean it means that um, it depends on the license because um, it will tell you specifically but most PLR okay they allow you to um, edit okay so for example there's an article you can edit it you can combine different PLR articles into one okay you can claim it as your own you can say that you write it right and you can repurpose it you can um, do whatever you like to it but there are some it depends on the license okay 
So for example, okay, for example, um, I have a PLR, um, clean eating. Okay, so I have a clean eating e-course. This is where I get uh, my article, clean uh, lunch ideas for the whole family. So this is a PLR article, and this is the license. Okay, this is the PLR license. What you can do. Okay, it says you can add the content to an ebook or a product that you plan to sell or give away. You can modify the content by removing, adding, or otherwise editing to suit your needs. You can use the content on your website, blogs, newsletters. You can bundle the content into a report. You can add affiliate links. You can charge for access to read this content. What you cannot do, you cannot sell this product. Okay, so PLR licenses are different. It depends on the author, what kind of license they will give. So here's another um, PLR content, and let's see the license. Okay, so it's the same. All right, so it depends. But most PLR will allow you to edit the article. It will allow you to um, claim the article as your own, or you, um, it's actually very um, lenient. Okay, there are a few restrictions to PLR, but it's important that you check the license so that you don't violate the license. Okay, so where to find PLR? Okay, there's some free PLR articles on the internet, but most of it are crap. So what I have is I have a PLR membership. Okay, so personally, this is the PLR uh, membership that I have. Um, I'm a member of plrdatabase.net, okay, and I pay about um, nine dollars a month to get access to this. So this um, PLR, okay, it is a PLR website. So I just type whatever article I need. For example, um, I need the article about dog training. So I just type here dog training. Okay. And we can see here there are um, several articles that I can use and modify. Okay, I can claim these articles as my own. I can say that I wrote them. I can edit it, remix it, transform it. Okay, I can combine them all together into one big article. Okay, so I just download it. All right. So with PLR, there's also not just articles. There are ebooks, videos graphics you know there's a lot um, of PLR material even software there are PLR software okay so uh, it's not just PLR database there are also other um, many PLR membership sites okay so here are um, some of the six best PLR membership sites Okay, so um, it is. I recommend to use a membership site because um, if it's free PLR, it's usually not good quality. Okay, sometimes even in memberships, uh, there's bad quality. Okay, but at least there are some good quality. Okay, but if uh, it's just free, then most of the time it's bad quality PLR. So here are the um, some PLR membership sites, IDPLR, Resell Rights Weekly. Okay, so I've been a member of this, Resell Rights Weekly. It costs about $19 a month. It's a good um, site as well. And PLR Assassin, okay. This is also, I've also been a member of this site. And this one costs about um, $9 to start. Okay. Now, per month, okay, that is a monthly membership. But um, you can also have a bigger discount if you go for their uh, monthly, i sorry, their three-month plan or their yearly plan. Okay, so I'll show you some. Um, okay. So that is uh, where you get your PLR membership. Okay, so I'll just show you here. So the one-month plan here is $10. Okay, and I have a 10% discount, so it costs me about $9 per month because I have a discount. And here, the three-month plan, it costs $25 per month. Uh, sorry, per three months. Okay, 
and the one year plan is $49 and the lifetime plan is $89 okay so lifetime plan you can access unlimited um, for the lifetime okay you will it's just a one-time payment no more payments ever so um, my recommendation is PLR database because um, I found out that they're the cheapest okay so most PLR membership costs about $19 a month $15 a month and this is the cheapest I found and it's good quality so that is uh, what I recommend okay so I'll see you in the next video hi guys so today I'm gonna teach you how to create some content for your app so first uh, we need to add another screen uh, screen is sort of like a page it's like a page of your app so you need to click this plus button okay just click it to add another screen and input a screen title okay so I'll just put that and then click OK okay so this is the new screen it's called dog training and you have to click this icon and then choose open and for this method this is the first method of making a content uh, this is the detail screen so just choose detail so this is um, the easiest method but there are other methods of making content for your app so you can see here this is a blank page so we need to put the header bars that we made earlier so just click the screen properties which is the third icon and then click the second icon from the top which is bar manager and remember we made um, some header bar in the earlier tutorial so just click this and drag this on top okay just drag this and then the menu bar uh, drag it on the bottom okay so now we can see the bars that we made okay so uh, to make a content we can add some images okay just click it and drag it here and then choose an image so here click select and then choose an image so hold on for a bit click this dog image okay so there you can actually adjust the size if you want um, you can make it smaller and then you can put it in the center okay so now we want to put the title here so first we need to add a separator so there's some spacing and then remove the line so choose no line and then we can add a text so just drag the text here and we can type the title okay so it's on the left corner so uh, we need to align this on the center but it will not show because this is 100% width so we need to reduce the width so just reduce that so it will be more on the center okay so now we can add another separator okay again remove the line there and then we have our content here so we need to drag another text element drag it here and then we will copy the article details for example I told you earlier about the PLR articles so here is a sample okay just copy this and then put this here okay so you can actually cut this into paragraphs like this okay and since this looks too big we need to adjust this the size so it's 100% width we need to make it smaller okay and align it on the center and then this size is too big so we'll change the size now it's default size we'll make it small okay so it's small so actually you can here you can make it bold or italic and underline okay so you can do that so this is the simplest way of making content for your app but there are many other ways to add content to your app and I will show you in the next lesson hi guys so today I'm gonna teach you how to create content for your app 
but in the earlier tutorial I taught you how to create um, content using the detail view but now we're gonna use a data view okay so first you have to click create app all right and then I'll put the app name again we're gonna use the blank view for this you click create Okay, so this method of making a content for your app is more advanced than the one I taught you earlier. Okay, so here's a name, description, etc. But we're gonna skip this. So you have to click here, edit. So we'll go straight into the content. Just hold on for a bit, it's still processing. Okay, so in the earlier tutorial, we used the detail view, this one. This is a simple way of making content for your app. But if you want a more complicated app, co uh, complicated uh, view, then you're going to use the data view. If you have a lot of information and a lot of details, it is best to use data view. So just click this, data view. Alright, so first we have to create a database. Uh, we're going to choose new database and then we're going to create a database name. Okay, so there's our database name, database1, and we have to choose the number of fields. So for this tutorial, uh, we're going to use three fields. Okay, and then we have to put a field name. So the first field, we're going to call it the name field. And then the second field we're gonna call it description. And the third field we're gonna call photo field. Okay, so in the first field, you can see here there's a data type. And the data type is going to be text. So for the name field, it's gonna be a text, text field. And the second field, the description, the database is still gonna be text field. Uh, while the third field, the photo field, we have to change the text into image all right image data type so you can see here there are many kinds of data type there's the text number date location image date set remote image audio video etc but for the photo field we're gonna have to choose the image field okay so after you do that just click accept all right so this is a, our database and we can edit this by clicking this one, this button, edit button. Alright, so this is the database. Uh, this is the name column, the description column, and the photo column. So we need um, to put some information in this database. So we're going to do that by using an article. So actually this article is a PLR article alright so this article is called clean menu ideas and my suggestion is for you to choose articles that are like a list okay so this is a list of clean meal ideas so you have number one ultimate tuna sandwich number two everything salad number three quinoa salad so that is my suggestion so let's copy the ultimate tuna sandwich, copy, and then paste it on the name column. So we can do that by clicking this icon and then paste ultimate tuna sandwich. Okay, so we're going to go back to the article and copy the description and then paste it on the description section. So we're going to do this for all the items in our article. So number two, everything salad. We're going to copy it and then paste it here on the name section. And then copy the description of everything salad into the description section. And then number three, copy quinoa salad. And then paste it here again in the name section. Don't include the number. And then let's copy the description of quinoa salad. Okay, copy it, paste it here. And then let's copy veggie salad rolls. Then paste it here. 
Okay, copy the description and then paste it here. And lastly, the ch copy chili and then paste it here. And then copy the description of chili and then paste it here. Okay, so once we're done, actually, if you want, uh, you can see it here. We can make this into multiple paragraphs. You can uh, divide this into like that. If you want to bold, you can do bold or italic. So you can edit it like that. All right. So let's go back. Uh, let's just return it to its original state. Okay. Okay. So see here we filled everything on the name section and the description section so the only left blank is the photo section so we need to um put some photos in here and we will do that by going to pixabay.com remember that pixabay is our resource for royalty free images so we have here um, ultimate tuna sandwich. So let's look for a photo of a tuna sandwich. Okay, so we're gonna save this photo, the tuna sandwich photo. Okay, and we're gonna look for the next um, item, everything salad. So let's look for a picture of a salad okay so let's use this photo okay and the next item is a quinoa salad so let's look for a picture of a quinoa salad okay so let's just save this Okay, so next is veggie salad rolls. Alright, so let's copy um, and download. And the last item is chili. So let's look for a picture of chili. Okay, so let's use this photo. Alright, so we have downloaded all the photos. So next in the photo section, we have to click this icon. Besides the ultimate tuna sandwich, okay. Click this icon. And then upload resource. And a file. And then click the tuna sandwich photo. Click accept. Okay, just wait for it. Still loading. All right, and then click the check um, check icon. All right, so next, everything salad. Just click here, this icon, and then let's upload the picture of the salad. So the salad is here. Click accept. Okay, just wait for it a bit, and then click the check icon. And then quinoa salad, so let's click here, upload resource, file, and then the picture of the quinoa salad, click accept. And check, uh, click the check. And then we have the veggie salad rule, so click this, upload resource, file, veggie salad rolls, accept. Okay, and just click this check button and then lastly the chili upload resource file and then the chili and then click accept okay so click the check all right so once we finish all that name description photo you have to click the accept button here on the right all right so we're done for that so next is we need to create the data visualization.
for the data view okay so first we're gonna add click the checks uh, plus sign okay we're gonna add a list view list view okay click list view okay and then after that you have to click this it says list one just click this and then go here below okay so it looks like a blank okay so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna in, in drag a table okay drag a table and then here it says 50% and 50% we're gonna change the first table into 25% here 25% and then the second um, table to 75% okay all right so next we're gonna hover over the image don't click it don't click it just hover hover over it all right and then you see the photo so this photo is the photo that we uploaded on the database remember that we uploaded photos on the database and the item is column is called photo so drag this photo on the first column and then go to the text um, button but don't click it I don't click it again just hover okay just hover and then you once you hover you're gonna see here sorry you're gonna see your T name and T description remember the database we made we made the database with the field name okay and then uh, we made a uh, field name description and a field name name. So we're going to drag the name. Okay. This is from the database. Drag this over here. Okay. So what we're going to do here, the name field. Um, this is 100%. We're going to make it a little smaller. And then we're going to align it on the center. Click align. Okay. So that's just that. That's for the list view. Okay, so this is the data visualization, okay, of the list view. So here you can't see what it looks like, but I will show you what it looks like, okay? Just hold on for a bit. So this is what it looks like. Okay? This is what it looks like. This is the um, I'm using an Android emulator okay so this is the photo okay this is the photo here this is what it looks like and then remember the name field so this is the name field ulti ultimate tuna sandwich so we just need to um, do this for the first um, row we don't need it to do this for every row it will automatically populate this using the information in our database so again this is what it looks like remember we have five items the ultimate tuna sandwich everything salad quinoa salad veggie salad rolls and the chili okay so now rem this is the list view okay remember that so now we're gonna create the detail view so we're gonna click this plus button and then we're going to add the detail view. So this is the list view. This is the detail view. We need the detail view. So just click it. Alright. And then it will add the um, detail 1. So list 1 corresponds to detail 1. So you click detail 1. Okay. Again, this looks empty. Here. Look at the bottom. It's empty. So we need to design what will it look like. So we're going to drag... the uh, we're gonna hover over the image button but don't click it just hover and it, uh, we go to the photo photo button okay this is again from our database so you drag the photo button here okay photo so next is um, we're gonna add a separator okay but we're gonna make this line invisible again so click here and then choose no line all right so next is we're gonna create um, the, a text but if you hover here don't click just hover 
and then go to the T name. This is from our database. Okay, text field name, T name. So just drag this, okay, and put it here. Okay, so this is 100%. We're going to make it smaller. Okay, and then put it on the center field. All right, center like that. All right. So this is the name field from our database. All right. So we're going to add the description. So we're going to add another separator. And then we're going to make this line invisible again. So just go here and click no line. Okay. And then we're going to add cover again over to text field and then go to T description. This means text field description. This is the description section of our database. So just drag T description here. Okay. So we're going to change the size here. It says default size. We're going to make it small. Click small. Okay. And then it's 100% width here. So we're going to um, make it smaller. And then center alignment. All right. Center alignment. So this is the data visualization for the detail view. Okay. So I want to show you what it looks like. Okay. So this is the list view. And then the detail view is when um, this is what it looks like. Sorry about this. This is the ad. Okay. Because this is real time Android emulator. So this is what it looks like. This is the photo. You can see here there's a photo. And then here's the name. All right. So this is the name field. And this is the description field. Here's the description field. Okay, so this is what it looks like. All right, but you need to connect this list view to the detail view. If you don't connect it, then it will not show, the detail view will not show. So I will teach you how to do this. So let's go back to the list view. Okay, click the list one and then click this edit. All right, click edit, and then you can see this um, box is edit, right? Okay, so let's go to action. It says here do nothing, but we're gonna choose go to view. Okay, go to view, click go to view, and then you're gonna choose the detail one. This is how will it connect? Okay. So again, this is the um, we're in the list one, and then click edit, and then go to action. It says do nothing, but you have to go to go to view. Okay, this is a third item. Go to view, and then we connect the detail section by it says destination. What's the destination? Choose view, and then you're gonna choose detail one. Okay, that's how it's gonna connect. So there's the detail one and the list one. Okay. So this is what will happen. Um, this is the list view. Remember this list one, right? If you click the item here that we connected, it will go to detail one. Okay. This is the detail view. If you don't connect the detail view to the list view, then... All we're gonna see is like this and even if we click this and click this then the detail will not show so it's very important that you connect the list view to the detail view okay so that's all for this tutorial and I'll see you in the next video hi guys so today I'm gonna teach you about filters and screens okay so in our last lesson we discussed about the list list view and the detail view okay so now let's go to the screen tree. So just click here on the screen tree. Okay, just click that. And as you can see, we only have one screen. Okay, and it is the main screen. So what I want to do is I want to rename this screen. Okay, so let's just click this icon and click this pencil icon and then click um, rename. Okay, so let me just change the name into lunch. Then click OK. 
So if you're asking why did we change the name to lunch, it's because I have an article here. It's a lunch article. And the items are ultimate tuna sandwich, everything salad, quinoa salad, etc. Okay. So now I want to add another screen. Okay. So we can do that by clicking this plus button. Okay. But we can also do that in another way. Okay. We can do that by cloning the lunch screen. Okay. So let's click this icon. And then just click this clone button. Okay. Just click it. And then we'll name it snacks. Then click OK. Okay. So if you're asking why we renamed it snack, it's because we have an article here entitled snacks. Okay. So what I want is to have one screen per article. Okay. So you also have your um, article about superfoods and article about dairy. Okay. So each of these articles will have their own screens, right? Okay, so let's clone this um, lunch screen. Okay, let's add superfoods. Click OK. And then let's clone it again. And then we'll name it Dairy. Then click OK. Alright, so now let's go back to the lunch screen. Okay, let's go back to the lunch screen, click open. Okay, so what we want, okay, is remember our lesson about the database, okay? We want to edit the database, so click edit, okay? Let's go to the database, okay? So this is our existing database. So if you remember with, with our lesson, we have the name column, description column, and the photo column on the database, okay? So now what I want is to add another column. So let's click this plus button, okay, to add another column. And I want to rename this column. So just click this icon and click rename, okay. So we'll rename that column into type, okay. So what will we put in this column, okay. So we will put the type of item, okay. So, ultimate tuna sandwich, okay, it belongs under the lunch type. So, let's just click this and put lunch, okay. So, I'm just going to copy that for all of the items, alright. I'm going to copy lunch because quinoa salad is lunch, veggie salad rolls is lunch, and chili is a lunch item, okay. So, now we want to add the rest of the items, okay. So, here's our snack article. Okay, we're going to copy the first snack item, which is clean trail mix, and then we're going to paste it here. Okay, and then we're going to copy the description of the clean trail mix. Just copy it and then paste. Okay, and then what kind of item is clean trail mix? Okay, that is a snack item, so let's put snacks. Okay, and click X. Alright, so now we're going to copy the rest of the articles, okay? The second snack item is a loaded smoothie. So let's just copy that, okay? Let's copy the description of loaded smoothie. And then we're going to copy the third snack item, which is a Greek yogurt parfait. Okay, let's copy that and then copy the description of the Greek yogurt parfait. Okay. Alright. So again, what kind of item is loaded smoothly? It's a snack, so let's put snacks on the type column, okay? And then Greek yogurt is also a snacks, okay? So just do that. Okay, so next we have our article about superfoods, okay? So the first superfood is chia, okay? Just put your chia, and then um, the description of chia, okay? So I'm just going to pause this video and I'm just going to copy all the um, description and the items for the superfood section. Okay, so now I've finished um, copying all the superfood items, okay? All the items in the article superfood. I actually only have three items, just chia, quinoa, and the berries, okay? So now, what kind of item is chia, okay? What type of item is chia okay it is a superfood so let's put that on the 
type column and then the quinoa is also a superfood so let's just paste the superfoods and berries is also a superfoods okay so next we're gonna um, add the items for the dairy article okay so the first item here is milk okay let's copy that and then let's copy paste the description of milk okay so the second dairy item is ice cream all right so let's copy that here and then let's copy the description of ice cream all right and lastly um, let's copy butter and the description of butter okay so let's copy the description of butter okay so now let's um, go here on the type column okay what kind of, what type of item is milk okay that is a dairy item so let's put dairy and then let's copy the um, here on the ice cream because ice cream is another dairy and butter is another dairy okay so now click accept okay so actually I forgot um, we have to upload the pictures here so for the clean trail mix just um, click this icon okay and i already uploaded the pictures here so let's just um okay click check okay and the loaded smoothly okay let me just upload the pictures greek yogurt parfait okay chia okay so i'm just gonna pause this video and i will finish uploading all the images okay okay so let us add the last picture for butter okay just click this icon and click butter all right okay so now we're done okay so as you can see there are four types of items here there's the lunch items there's the snacks there's the superfoods and there's the dairy okay and now let's click accept all right so remember we have the lunch screen the snack screen superfoods and dairy okay so now we're here on the lunch screen okay okay so now we need to remove this filter let's just uh, click x and let's add another filter okay so this is in the filters and order section just click this icon and then click this filter one okay then click this plus button and then um, click type and the operator will be equal and then on the valor section let's put the type which is a lunch and then click accept okay so this means um, this filter okay it means that with the lunch screen okay only the lunch type of items will show on the lunch screen okay this filter ensures that only the lunch type of items show on the screen okay so now let's go to the screen tree and let's do the same for the other screens so now let's go to the snack screen so just click this icon and click open okay so now we're in the snack screen so there's this filter okay okay since um we uh, remember that we cloned this snack screen from the lunch screen so it's gonna say type equals lunch okay so what we want is we're going to change the lunch into snack. Okay, click accept. Okay. Um, by the way, okay, when you see this snacks, lunch, okay, in this um, box, where do we get where we're putting on this blank? Okay, we are getting this from the database. Okay, remember here on the database, I'll show you, click edit. Okay. We are getting that from the type column on the database okay we're getting this from the type column lunch snacks superfoods dairy okay this is where we are getting it okay and not on the screen name because it's the screen name is snacks okay but we're getting this from the database okay so if there's a wrong spelling on the screen and a different spelling on the database what you need to follow is the spelling on the database all right 
But what I do here is um, I just use the same name for the screen name and the same name for the type on the database so I don't get confused. Okay. So now let's go to the next screen. Okay. The superfood screen. Just click open. Okay. Let's go to the superfoods. Now we're in the superfoods. Now there's this filter again. Just click it. Okay. Again, since we cloned this page, the screen from the lunch screen, it's going to show the filter is going to show lunch. Okay. So we're going to change this into superfoods. Then click accept. Okay. But if, for example, there's no filter here. Okay. Let's just remove the filter. Just an example. Okay. If there's no filter here. Let's add another filter by clicking this one, this icon. Okay. And then click here, filter one. Just click that. And then click this plus button. And then click on the field, field um, section. Just click it. And click type. Okay. And the operator is equal. Okay. The operator should be equal. And then on this valor um, section, okay, what you will write is the type, which is superfoods. And then click accept. Okay, so now we're done for the superfoods. We're going to go to the dairy and we're going to do the filter again. Okay, so just click the filter. And then again, it says lunch, but we're going to change it to dairy. Okay, type equal dairy. Okay, click accept. Alright, so I'll show you what happens here. Okay, so let's, let's go here. Okay, so this is the lunch screen, for example. Okay, this is a live app. And when we click it, it shows only lunch items but our database includes lunch snacks um, dairy and superfoods but because we filtered it it only shows lunch items okay so now the snack section the snack screen shows only snack items because we filtered it to show only snack items for the snack screen all right so that is what it does Okay, now let's add the navigation menu, okay? Let's go back to the screen tree, then click the plus button, okay? And type navigation, okay? Click OK. Alright, so let's go to the navigation. Just click this icon, then click open, okay? And then we're going to click the detail view, okay? Go to detail view. Let's wait a bit. Okay, so now we're here. So um, let's add a separator here. Let's add two separators. And then let's remove the lines. Okay, no line, no line. Okay, so now I'm going to add the navigation buttons. Okay, so let's click table. All right, so for now, I'm just going to pause this video. Okay, and I will make the navigation screen. Okay, just hold on for a bit. Okay, so now I've finished uploading the navigation buttons. All right. So now we need to connect the appropriate button to the correct screen. Okay. So let's start with the launch button. Okay. Let's click launch button and click edit. Okay. So you see here there's no action. Okay. It says here no action. So just click that. And click go to screen and choose screen. Okay. So let's click that and then we're going to choose the launch screen. Okay. So now we're going to do that for the snack button as well. Okay, so click the snack button. Click go to screen. Choose screen will be snack screen. Okay, so we will do that for all these buttons. Okay, superfoods button. Go to screen, choose screen, superfood screen. Okay, dairy screen, a uh, dairy button. Click it. Go to screen and choose screen is dairy screen. Okay. So what will happen is like this, okay? So it's very, very important that we connect the correct button to the correct screen, okay? Because if we don't connect, uh, what will happen is even if we click this and click this and click this, then nothing will happen, okay? But if we connect it, okay, if we choose, uh, click the launch button, we will go to the launch screen, okay? So you see here, if we click the snack button, then we we'll go to the snack screen, okay? Superfoods button, click it, and we will go to the superfood screen, okay? 
So it's very important that we connect it. Okay. And another very important note, let's go here to the screen tree. And you can see here that superfoods is on the very top. Okay. We need to make the navigation menu on the very top. Okay. So let's just click this icon and then click the number one. Okay. The number one that says main screen. Okay. Because the um, screen that is on the very top, that will be the main screen. Okay. So what is the main screen? The main screen is the first screen that you see when you open the app. Okay, so let's open the app. Okay. And then this is the first screen that we see. Okay. The, the navigation screen is the first screen that we see. So it means that this is the main screen. Okay. But if we choose the launch screen and assign it as the main screen, then the first screen that we will see is going to be the launch screen, which is like this. So when you open your app, the first thing you will see is like this, and that is not good. So it's very important to assign the appropriate screen as the main screen. So in this case, it's the navigation screen. So let's just do that again. Just click this icon, and then click the number one, okay, that says main screen, okay? So that is how you assign a main screen, okay? So I'll see you in the next video. Hi guys, so today I'm going to teach you how to create the Simple Codes app. So first, uh, let's click here, create a new app, and type the uh, app name. And we're going to go to blank, click create. Okay, just hold on for a bit while it's still processing. Okay, so we want to add an icon here. Click edit icon, and I already made an icon. So uh, we want rounded corners, so we click here, rounded corners, so it will be more rounded. And then click OK. And then let's click Modify Data, add the description. And then let's choose a category, I'll choose Education, then click Save. Okay, so now we're going to click Edit. Click here, edit, and let's just wait for a bit. Okay, so it's still loading, let's just wait. Okay, so for this, the first screen, we're gonna use a detail screen, so just click that detail. And then we need to have a background color here, so let's go to screen properties and then click um, the third icon, which is background screen, and then click background image. So we're going to add a background image here, file, and then click the background, accept. Okay, it's still uploading. Just hold on for a bit. Okay, so now click the check sign. Alright, so now we have a background. So next we're going to have to create a header bar. Okay, so click to screen properties and then we can see here bar manager and then we're going to add a top bar so just click here and then let's put the name top bar then click this icon and then click edit so as you can see it's still blank um, we're going to drag a table in here okay and i want to change the background color of this into um solid and then click I want the color to be violet so I have some already saved the color I want so just paste it okay so now we need to make three cells okay add another cell okay so the uh, first cell it's going to be 15%. The second cell is going to be 30%. Ah, uh, sorry, 70%. And the last cell is going to be 15%. Okay, so this is what, what it looks like. And I want to put an image on the first cell and then put an image on the second cell. Right, so click the first cell so that um, we can choose the photo so click select here upload resource 
file and I'm gonna put an arrow here so click this the arrow picture click accept and then click the check sign alright so now we have an arrow here so I want another icon here click this one and then click select then upload resource file and I want a menu icon so click accept and then click the check sign so now you can see there's a menu icon so we want a um, text here on the center I want it to say quotes so let's type that quotes and then we need to change the color into white and then let's um, adjust this on the center okay so now you can see it's uh, on the top section so we want to adjust that you can do that by clicking the center um, cell the 70% just click this click this and then you can see the alignment here just choose the center alignment okay so now it's already um, good so what uh, what I want is to make another bar so let's go back to the bar manager and then click a plus and then I want to make a bottom bar so let's name that bottom bar and then let's click this again and then click edit okay so it's uh, empty again so let's add another table here table then let's change the background color okay by clicking this background solid alright so I, we need three cells again so I'm gonna add another cell here okay and then the sizes are going to be 20% the second cell I want to be 60% and the third cell I want to be 20% okay so we're gonna add the image here again on the first cell and the third cell okay so the first cell click it then click select and we're gonna add the left arrow okay and click the third cell click select and click upload resource and we're gonna upload the right arrow click accept okay and then click the check sign so now uh, we want we're gonna drag a text here and we're gonna put the text share okay so we need to change the color so that it will be visible and then move it here on the center okay so we need click this uh, middle cell that says 16% and we're gonna choose the center alignment okay this one so now that's done click X alright so it's still blank you can see we have to click the bar manager and click the top bar and drag it on the top bar okay and now we have to click the bottom bar and click drag it to the bottom okay so now we can see the top bar and the bottom bar All right so now we have to create the um, menu okay so I want a separator here um, and another separator here and let's remove the line okay I want to remove the line okay so let's put a text field here and then we're gonna write their categories but I want this on the center and I want this to be a yellow color okay so uh, we put another separator here okay another separator and then we're gonna put a another text field and then we're gonna put their uh, wisdom okay so these are the category of the codes okay um, we, here I will show you these are the categories I made uh, wisdom, motivational romantic, sad and funny so these are quotes categories Okay, so we will put this on here Okay, so wisdom I want this to be white color and center alignment and then we're going to add a separator but instead of um, this line I'm going to click it and we're going to make it a dashed line if you want you can make it a dotted line but I personally prefer the dashed line so now we need to copy this wisdom 
okay we're gonna copy the dash line we're gonna edit this later but for now we just copy it so we don't have to um, keep repeating changing the colors okay so copy paste let's hold down for a bit uh, five three okay this is a fourth and the last one Okay, so we're going to change the text. It says wisdom. I'm going to change it to motivational. Okay, romantic, sad, and fun. Okay, so these are the quotes categories. So now we need to create a separate screen for each category. So now let's go here at the screen tree. And then we're going to add another screen. And we're going to make a wisdom screen. Click OK. OK, so let's um, click this icon and choose Open to go to the wisdom screen. OK, so now we're going to choose the data view. OK, click this data view. All right. So now, um, remember our categories here. Wisdom, motivational, romantic, sad, and funny. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to collect some quotes from the internet that are wisdom quotes. So let's just do that. Let's do Google. Okay. Okay, so here are some wisdom quotes. And we're going to put this on Microsoft Excel. So we want to find five wisdom quotes wisdom wisdom and then okay so let's just copy this put it here okay so the first column is the type of quote it's a wisdom quote okay and the second column is where we put the quote okay so we also want to put um, five motivational quotes Okay, we want five of these, and then we're gonna have um, sad quotes, sad, sad. All right, so we uh, when we uh, finish this, okay, we just copy the quotes here, and then paste it on the Microsoft Excel. Okay, these are wisdom quotes. You're gonna finish this, sad and romantic, five romantic. Okay, so once we finish this, actually I already finished it. This is the finished product. We have wisdom quotes, motivational, sad, romantic, and funny. So once we finish that, um, you need to click file and then click save as, not save. You need to click save as. And then we're going to choose um, the file type CSV, okay? This is very important, okay? You do not choose Microsoft Excel, not Excel Workbook, Excel, etc. You need to choose CSV, comma delimited, CSV, okay? This is very important. So you save that. Okay, so I already saved that earlier. Okay, so this is going to be our database, okay? So just let's go back here to um, the application. Okay, so now we're going to create a new database and we're going to name the database. And we're going to have two, uh, number of fields. It's going to be two. Why? Because here we have two columns, the type column and the code column. Okay, so we have two columns, so we're going to choose two fields. So field name is the type and field name is code. Okay. So these are the quotes field and the type field. So click accept. Okay. So now you can see here is a database named quotes. And we're going to go to the database by clicking here. Click edit. Okay. Just hold on for a bit. All right. So now this is the database. As you can see, this is empty. Okay. This is what I'm going to teach you. Um, you go here on the icon advanced options and then click import data 
then you're gonna click select separator comma and then choose upload CSV okay so we're gonna upload this file we made earlier quotes database so just wait for it it's going to upload the database we made earlier and then click this alright so now we just uploaded this um, database we made okay so you can first do it at Microsoft Excel and then just upload it okay so now we're gonna click accept alright so now we have to do the vis data visualization we're gonna click here and add the detail view okay so then click the detail view and we have to make the data visualization for this alright so we're gonna have to add the background screen first so click screen properties and then um, background screen so click background image and upload it okay and then we're gonna upload the bars that we made so go back here screen properties and then click bar manager and then just drag the top bar and the bottom bar okay so this is our data visualization so now we have to input the data visualization okay so now we're gonna have to um, create add separators okay no line separators no line okay and then we're gonna put the um, hover over the text button and then choose the type okay drag this type and then put this on the center okay we want this to be a yellow color okay yellow color and then we're gonna put some separators okay no line separators no line and then we're gonna hover over the text don't click it just hover and then drag the coat and then we want this to be um, center alignment and then make it a little smaller and then make it white okay so this is our data visualization I'm gonna show you what it looks like okay okay so it's similar to this I made earlier sorry about that just hold on for a bit okay so this is uh, I made earlier okay this is the type this is a type here and then um, this is the code this is a code here in the data visualization but they also put here um, a picture of a small house so if you want to put a picture or not it's up to you you can put any picture or if you just want to plain okay so this is what it looks like this is the data visualization okay there's a this is a type it's a wisdom remember we have uh, different types wisdom motivational funny sad and romantic so this is the type and this is the code okay so that what's it look like so now to finish this um, we only created uh, one screen uh, we're still not yet finished okay we need to add a filter remember this is the vi wisdom screen and we need to add a filter so click here in the filters in order and then you will see here a uh, icon and then it says here filter one you need to click it okay click this filter one and then you'll see a plus sign and then click the type and then click operator equal and this is wisdom okay click accept so these are all in the wisdom screen these are all wisdom codes so it's very important that you type here you filter this into wisdom screen okay so next um, let's go back to the screen tree and then we're gonna clone this we're gonna clone this screens okay so just click the um, icon and then click clone okay we we need to make a motivational screen click OK and then we're gonna clone all of this 
Ah, funny. Okay. Click clone. Sad. And then clone again. Romantic. Okay, so you have uh, the wisdom screen, motivational, fan set, and romantic. So you have we have to go to each of the screens. Okay, you have to go to the uh, motivational screen. Click open, and then we need to change the filters. All right, so there already this are, there's already data visualization because we cloned it. Okay, this that's already finished. Okay, so all we need to do here is just click the filter and then change the filter into, this is wisdom, okay, so we need to change it into motivational. We need to change the filter into motivational, click accept, right, so we need to do this for all the screens, so we'll do the funny one next, go to funny, open, and then we need to change the filter again for funny. So remember you need to do this for all the screens or else um, the categories specific categories will not show okay just hold on for a bit okay so now we're in the funny screen so you have to go to filter and change the filter to funny okay click accept remember the filter is based on the type here Wisdom, motivational, sad, romantic, funny. So that is based on that. Okay, remember that. So next, we have to go to romantic screen and change the filter. Click the filter. It says wisdom because remember that we cloned it. So now we're going to make it into romantic. Click accept. And then lastly, we're going to do the sad screen. Okay, filter and then type equals sad okay so after we do that we have to go back to the main screen go back so let's click this icon and click open all right so in the main screen uh, remember their categories we have to link each item to this corresponding screen so we have to click wisdom okay and then the action says do nothing so you have to click this go to screen and choose the wisdom screen. Okay, this is very important because if we don't link this, when you click this icons, um, I mean this wisdom motivational, then it, it nothing will happen. Okay, we need to link this so that when you click motivational, it will go to the motivational screen. Alright, so we have to click this motivational and then go to screen go to the motivational screen and then next we have to go to romantic and then go to screen go to the romantic screen okay this is very important guys okay so just click this sad and then action go to the sad screen and then click funny go to the screen and then choose the funny okay so this is very important. So now, um, remember this back icon that we made? Okay, let's click that. Let's go there. Okay, edit. So we click this back icon, click edit, and see the action here. It says do nothing. So what I want is um, if we click it, we will go back. So we choose back, ac back action here. Click back. Okay. So now this is the menu um, icon. Click this. Okay. So I want, if we click the menu icon, it will go to the home screen. Okay. So we click it, click this and it says go to screen. And we want to go to the main screen. Okay. Main screen. Home screen, main screen. Okay. That is what I want to happen. Okay. So let's click the X. And then we're going to edit this again the bottom bar so that when we click it something will happen because if we don't edit this and assign an action when we click it it's just nothing will happen okay so we want the action so let's click this all right so we click the first icon here it's a back button and 
action we want it to go back okay click back all right so this share okay we click this edit all right action says do nothing but i want it to share okay so we click this share icon okay so what will we share so we will go to the compositor and we want to share the code so let's click codes code okay all right so the next one again we will we can choose an action here okay so this um, next icon click action and choose next okay click next and click X okay okay so I will teach you um, I will show you the results of our app so this is our app codes test and just let me just click that okay so there's some ads here so this is the result okay categories if you click wisdom it will show some wisdom quotes and if you want uh, to see the next quote just click here click next 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 and if you want to go back you click the back button okay so all right so that is what it looks like you can see here okay if you click this uh, it will go to the wisdom screen and then uh, if you click this the next button you know, just um, it will go to the next code next code next code next code and if you want to go back uh, you can click this it will go back to the home page the categories page all right uh, we can also this is um, set to go back okay Hi guys, today I'm going to teach you how to create an action image screen, okay? So first we need to create our image and we will do that by going to canva.com. As you can see, I'm already logged in here at my Canva account, so let's just proceed. Okay, so first I want to add a background image, okay? And now I want to add some icons. So you see here is a Facebook icon. And we also have a Pinterest icon, a Twitter icon, and a Google Plus icon. So what I want now is to resize the icons. So let me just do that. I want to make the icons bigger. Alright, so now we need to align the icons. Okay, so now I want to add a shape. And change the color to yellow all right so now let's add some text and then I want to change the um, font and then change the size okay so now I want to add the back button and last but not the least let's add an exit button okay so now that we're done we need to click download and click the download button okay so I already downloaded it earlier and now let's go to mobincube.com and we will create our action image screen okay so first we have to go to the screen tree, the screen tree. Just click here at the right corner. Click screen tree and then click the plus button. And let's add the name for our screen. Then click OK. So I named our screen action image screen. So now let's go there. Click this icon and then click open. Okay, and now we need to choose the action image screen. So just click this action image. All right. So um, now we need to select the image that we made earlier. So just click select, upload resource, file, 
and then click the image earlier and then click accept. So this is the image that we made at canva.com earlier. We're just going to upload it. Okay, so now let's click the check sign. Okay, so now the image that we made earlier is uploading. And we need to assign actions to particular icons on the image. Alright, so we want to select this Facebook icon. And we will do that by highlighting the area of the Facebook icon. Okay, so you will see the highlighted area because there's a black rectangular box. Okay, there's a black rectangle box in there. So we need to click that. Click the area. And then it says here, no action. Okay, so we're just going to click that and then click open URL. And then let's add the Facebook URL. So what will happen there is if we click this Facebook icon, then we're going to be redirected to Facebook.com. Okay. So now we're going to do the same for the Pinterest icon. Okay, so we're going to highlight the Pinterest icon and then click the uh, icon. And now we're going to choose open URL and let's add the Pinterest.com URL. Okay, so we're going to do this for all these icons. So now the Google Plus icon. Okay, click it and then click open URL. And then add the google.com website. Okay. So we're going to do this for Twitter. Just highlight the Twitter icon. And click it. And then click open URL. And then add the twitter.com URL. So actually there are several actions here. Not just open URL. We can um, choose go to screen. Share. Interstitial. Do nothing. Back. Exit. Play. Stop. Etc. Etc. But because we have social icons, what we want is if we click this social icon, it will go to that social networking website. Okay, so if we click Facebook icon, we will go to Facebook.com. Okay, that is what we want to happen. Okay, so you see this rectangular box here. We don't want that. Okay, so let's click it. And then the rectangular box is the area style okay this is a rectangular marker area style so what we want is to hide the area so just click this and then click hide the area okay click hide the area so you can see here the different types of area style light in the area dark in the area okay but we want to hide the area so let's do that for all these buttons we made click pinterest icon area style hide the area okay do this for google as well hide the area okay hide the area all right okay so you see here there's an um, exit icon so we're going to highlight that and then click it and then we're going to choose an icon so since it's an exit icon we want the action to be exit so when we click this it will exit the app Okay, so just click here, exit. And then we're going to highlight the go to menu area. Click it. And then the action is going to be go to screen and it will go to the menu screen. So let's just click main screen. So when we click this go to menu, it will go to the menu screen or the main screen. And now let's highlight this back button. Click it. And then what we want is it will have the back action so let's just click back okay so remember to make sure that there are no rectangular boxes here so let's just click this and then click area style hide the area okay go to menu let's just hide the area and this one is we're gonna hide, hide the area again so let's just check again okay everything's already hide it area so I want to show you what it looks like so this is what it looks like okay so this is what it looks like okay so if we click this Facebook icon it's going to go to facebook.com see the login page I'm already not logged in but this is facebook.com and if we click this um, Pinterest icon 
it's going to pinterest.com you can see here okay went to pinterest.com if we click this google plus icon it will go to google.com all right if we click this twitter icon it's going to go to twitter.com and if we click the go to menu area it's going to the menu screen okay this is the menu screen and if we click this um, X icon then the app will close it will close okay so let's just go back to the app and as you can see if we um, choose an icon okay and then there's a certain action associated with it so here's the back button if you click it then it's gonna go back all right so that is how the action image screen works hi guys so today I will teach you how to create other screens okay so the first screen that we're gonna make is a web screen so first let's go to the screen tree and then click the plus icon and then type web screen click OK all right so we're gonna go to the web screen and then click open okay so now we're going to choose the web okay just click the web icon okay okay so now we're here at the web screen so what we need is to put an internet address here a web address for example it's wattpad.com so let's let me just paste it here okay so what will happen is if you click the web screen then it will be redirected to the website that is uh, we put on the blank okay so can you see here it's wattpad.com this is wattpad.com and it's redirected to the wattpad website okay so I will show you what happens and the actual app okay let me just show you okay so here is the web screen if we click it we will be redirected to the wattpad website okay so that is what it does you can put any website here and it will be re redirected to that website okay so now I want to add another screen okay so let's click this plus button and now I want to have a map screen click OK okay so we're gonna use this map screen okay click this icon then click open okay so now we're here in the map screen so let's just click this plus button to add a place okay and we'll put the name of the place here for example it's power fitness send one branch okay and now we're gonna click this icon and then we're gonna put the address there so click enter and as you can see we're now redirected to the map okay to the location on the map so I want to zoom this okay so that we can see the streets okay so once I'm happy with that we're gonna click save okay this click this icon to save the settings alright so now let's click this icon and then we will add the logo so just click this okay and this is the logo okay and then we need to put the address here All right, so I will show you what it looks like. Okay, so let me just go back here. Okay, so click the map. Okay, so this is the map screen. Okay, you can see it. And then if you click this icon, you can see the i the logo and the address. So this is where we put the logo, and this is where we put the address. So it's like that. All right. So now I want to make another screen. So let's just click this screen tree and then click the plus sign. So now I want to add an option list screen and click OK. All right, so now let's click the option list, then click this icon and click open. All right, so now we're going to choose the option list. Okay, just click this. Okay. So I'll show you what an option screen looks like. Okay, so this is what an option screen looks like. Okay, 
So now we're going to add the options. Just click the plus sign to add an option. And I want to copy this. So let's just click put web. And then the action is go to screen and then go to web screen. Okay. Then add another option. Okay. The next one is a map screen. So let's put the map. And then the action is go to screen. And then we're going to choose the map screen. Okay. So now we're going to click the plus sign. So the next um, option is the action screen. Then the action is go to screen, action screen. Okay. Now we're going to add another option. Back. Okay. So we can choose the back action. Choose the back action here. And then add another option, exit. And then choose the exit action here. So now I'm going to show you what it does. Okay, so this is the option screen. And if you click the web option, then we will be redirected to the Wattpad website. Okay. Okay, so if we click the map option, we will be redirected to the map screen. Okay. If we click the action screen, we'll be redirected to the action screen. And if we click the exit button, or the back button, okay, if we click the exit button, then the app will close, okay? So that is what uh, the option screen is like. Okay, so now we're going to add another screen, okay? Just click the plus sign, and now we're going to make a calendar screen. So click OK. All right, and then let's go to the calendar, then click Open. Okay, so now we're going to choose the calendar screen, so just click this. Okay, so this is what the calendar looks like. Okay, and then we can add the date here. Click the plus sign. Okay, so we'll choose the date December 19. And then let's choose a screen here. Okay, I will choose the main screen. So what it does is if we click the date, it will redirect to the screen that we chose. Okay, we can redirect it to the map screen or navigation, but I want it to redirect to the main screen. Okay, so I will show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is the calendar. Okay, this is the calendar screen. And you see here there's a date, December 19. And if we click this, then we are redirected to the main screen. Okay, so that is just an example. So we can add um, other dates. Okay, and choose other screens so you can add as much dates you want. All right. So now let's make another screen. Okay. Click OK. And then let's go to the new screen. Click Open. All right. So I'll just give you a brief overview of the other screens. So we already did the option list, detail, action image. So the RSS, okay, just click it. You just have to put the RSS feed here, okay, and it will load the RSS feed. You just put the URL of the RSS feed, okay. So now let's add another screen. And let's go to the new screen, two. Okay, so um, here the shop, okay, here's a shop screen, but I do not recommend the shop screen. And the creators of Mobin Cube also do not recommend the shop screen. It's because it's limited in functionality. So my suggestion here is instead of the shop screen, just use the web screen and put the URL of your Shopify store or your online store. And that will be better option. Okay. So here, um, lastly, we have the splash screen. Okay. So the splash screen, what it does is um, you just have to upload the logo here. Okay, just click that and then we can make it smaller. So what it does is just it will show a logo when the app opens. And then you can choose a delay here. You can use 0, 1, 2, whatever. Okay, and then after it, the logo will show, it will redirect to a certain screen. So you just choose the screen you want to redirect here. So that is all that the splash screen does, okay? So I'll see you in the next video.
Hi guys, so today I will teach you how to create a preview of your app. So you, you want to test it on your cell phone, your smartphone. So first you have to click this preview to request a demo. Okay, so this might take a while. Just hold on a bit. Okay, so first it will check the app if there is any error. And if there is no error, this is what will show. Okay, preview in Android. So uh, there are two ways of um, previewing this. One is you need your smartphone and you need a QR code generator. So um, you need to go get your cell phone, get your smartphone, and then you go to Play Store, Google Play Store. And then you will type there QR code scanner. So there are many um, QR code scanners at Google Play Store. So just choose one. Okay, you can download one, install it. Okay, install it. And once it's installed, you need to open it. And then once you open it uh, at your cell phone, you open the app. And then you take a picture of this QR code. Okay, you see this? You take a picture of this using the app QR code scanner. Okay, so. Uh, once you take a picture, it will automatically show the download link for your app. Okay, so it will download an APK file. And the other method is um, you can download a Android emulator for desktop. So what I use is CoPlayer. Okay, so I use CoPlayer. Uh, you're going to download this. Okay, so this is what the co-player looks like. Actually, what I'm using, this is the co-player. Okay, so if you're gonna use the co-player, uh, you download it once you installed it. Um, uh, if you're gonna use the co-player, you're gonna copy this link here. You see here, there's a link. Okay, you go to the link. Okay, you see this link. All right, this link copy it here. Okay, you can either um, if you take a picture using your smartphone, you use take a picture of this QR code, or if you're gonna use a CoPlayer, you see this link here. Okay, it's mobincube.mobi slash ddztlk. You're gonna put a dot apk. Okay, dot apk, and then click enter right so that is going to download the apk in your desktop okay so it see here um the apk is already downloading so i'm going to show you how to install the apk so that you can preview your app okay so i'm okay so go here it says plus apk okay plus apk just click this click this I just hold on for a bit. Okay, it says add APK file. So you're gonna type here in the file name the name of the APK. So for example, the previous APK is DDZRF here. Okay, this is the APK. And then you're gonna click open. Okay. So it's going to automatically install the APK. Let's hold on for a bit. Okay, so you see here it's installing. The APK is installing. Okay, just let's hold for a bit. Okay, so once the APK is installed, it will automatically open your app. So here is... Um, the app that we made earlier, Wisdom, Sad, Romantic, Funny, okay? So that is, see there's an ad because it's automatic. This is a live, this is a live Android emulator, okay? So that is how it goes. So see here um, are the apps I installed on the co-player. I have the different apps, all right? So that is how you do it. Hi guys, so you may be asking how to make money from Mobin Cube apps. Alright, so I will show you. So first you have to go to these tools. 
Okay. Okay, so once you're here in the tool section, um, we can make money by monetizing. Okay, so how will you monetize? Just click go. Alright, so uh, Mobin Cube will show ads on your app. Okay, but you must publish this app in order to monetize it. So in the later uh, tutorials, I will teach you how to publish your app. So for now, I'll just give you an overview of how this works. So Mobin Cube will place ads on your um, app. So there are different kinds of ads here. There's a banner, interstitial video. So you can choose to deactivate here. So if, for example, you don't like banner ads, you can choose deactivate. Or if you don't like interstitial, you can also deactivate. So you can choose the ad formats that you like. So I will show you an example of the ads. Okay, so here in uh, the app we created earlier, let's just click it. Okay, I'll just show you uh, what the ads look like. Okay, just hold on. See? So there's ads like here. This is a banner ad. And the ad we saw earlier, like this, is an interstitial ad. So Mobin Cube will automatically place an ad on your app. And it depends on you. You can deactivate which ads you don't like. Alright? So how will you get paid? You will get paid via PayPal. So you need to configure the PayPal. So I'll show you here. You have to go to my account. Okay. I'll, I will show you where to put the PayPal email. Because before, um, I had a hard time also looking for the PayPal email. So this summary, uh, there's an email here. But this is not the PayPal email. You need to um, put the PayPal email. Uh, you go to billing. Click here, at billing. Alright. And then there's the PayPal email. So you just put your PayPal email here and click save, and that is how Mobin Cube will pay you. Hi guys, so today I'm gonna teach you how to publish your app in Google Play Store. So first uh, we have to click this, okay, and then click publish. Okay, so now we're in here, okay, we need to publish it in Mobin Cube Store first before we can publish in Google App Store. So we need to click Finish and Publish Version 1. Version 1 is where we will publish in Mobin Cube Store. So let's just wait for a while. Okay. So we have to click this, check, and then it means we have to agree to the following terms. This application meets Mobin Cube content guidelines. So now let's click OK. And let's just wait for a bit. So it's still here uh, in the publishing queue. This might take a while, so um, I will pause this for now. Okay, so once it finished publishing in the Mobin Cube App Store, you can see it here, published version 1. Now we need to uh, publish the in Android market, so click finish and publish version 2. So it means that um, this will be our APK. Okay, so it's already published. Um, we have to click the APK. Alright, so just click here, download. Okay, and here it says um, Google Play App Signing. It's very important to click opt out of the new Google Play App Signing. So this will happen later. I will show you later. Um, when we submit to the Play Store, we will be prompted to Google Play App Signing. And we need to click opt out all right so for now click download okay just hold on for a bit it's still downloading okay you can see here it is downloading so actually I already downloaded this earlier okay so this is the result it's a zip file puppy training so what we need is to extract this file so just right click and then extract to the folder puppy training okay so this will be the result the folder puppy training and then click it and inside here is the APK okay this is the APK and this is what we will upload to Google Play Store
Okay, so just keep this handy. We will need this later. Okay, so next, we need to go to a link. Okay, this is the link. It's play.google.com slash apps slash publish. Okay, so it's play.google.com slash apps slash publish. All right. So we need to go to that link. Let's just go to that link. Okay, so we will be re redirected to Google Play Console. And now you need the Google account and you need to sign in to your Google account. Okay, so just click here. Um, sign into your Google account. Okay, just wait for a bit. Okay, so once you sign in, this is what it looks like. Okay, so you have to scroll down here and click continue. Uh, click this check box. Okay, it means you will agree to the Google Play Developer Distribution Agreement. So if you want to read this, you can open it in another window. But um, if you want to continue, just click this continue to payment. Okay, just click continue to payment and we will be prompted to pay okay we will pay twenty five dollars okay all apps um, that will be published to Google Play Store you need to pay twenty five dollars but this is one time fee only okay so one time fee and you can publish unlimited apps this is one time forever only twenty five dollars you can publish as many apps as you want only one time fee all right so here you need to put your credit card number um the credit card details cvc okay and then click pay all right so i already paid so we will just skip that okay so now um we will go to my account so this account i used i already paid the 25 dollars and here's a sample app that i made it's already published in the google Play Store. So now I will teach you how to submit an um, app in Google Play Store. So first we have to click this create application and then put the title of the app. Okay and then click create here. All right. So this is what it looks like and then we need to put a short description. And the full description. So my advice here is you need to put in um, lots of keywords but don't overdo it. But it's important that you put some keywords in there. So here is I will what I will put. Okay, so let me just copy that. Alright, so next, um, we need some screenshots. Okay, so you need to be prepared for the screenshots. Later, I will teach you how to create the feature graphics. Okay, so you need several graphics here. You need an icon, a high-res icon. The size should be 512 by 512 pixels. And we also need a feature graphic which the size would be 1024 by 500 pixels. Okay, so we also have a promo graphic here, but this is optional. You don't need to do this. But the high-res icon and the feature graphic is important. Okay, this is mandatory. If you don't uh, submit this, then Google will not accept your app. So it's very important. So we also need um, screenshots and we need at least two screenshots, okay? But there's a maximum of eight screenshots here. Later, I will show you how to do that. Okay, so let's upload our high-res icon here. Just click add high-res icon. Okay, so let me just look for the graphics. Okay, so this is our icon. Okay, so it's a puppy. This is the 
puppet training icon okay see what it looks like this is 512 by 512 pixels so now we will add the feature graphic so just click it here and I already made the feature graphic here okay so let's just wait for it and okay so this is my feature graphic and here we need to add at least one phone screenshot okay um, but there's a maximum of eight screenshots the more screenshot the better so let's just upload the screenshots click browse files and here are my screenshots okay so I made four screenshots if you want to see it um, in more detail I will show you this is what it looks like this is the feature graphic okay this is my feature graphic and this is the icon see it's big it's 512 by 512 and these are the screenshots okay this is the screenshot of the app okay so these are the screenshots I made four screenshots okay so let's go back here so see it's already uploaded and now we need to okay so there's a promo video but this is not um, required so we can skip that so next we will choose an application type okay so click application and select a category okay so my category would be education it depends on your app okay so website um, this is not mandatory we can skip this and then put your email in here there's a phone number but it's not mandatory we can skip that and here is a privacy policy this is um, important this is mandatory so we need a privacy policy URL okay so this is the privacy policy URL for my app okay you can copy this actually with your app you can just copy this so it's http www.myappterms.com slash reader dot php question mark lang equals n so you can copy this and use this for your own app okay so just copy this if you gonna make your own app you can copy this privacy policy url okay so now let's click save draft okay and now we're gonna answer all the other question here so click here app releases okay so here app releases there's a production beta and alpha so if we want the app to be live in the google play store then we have to click manage production okay and then create release okay this is where um, remember earlier uh, it says to opt out of Google Play signing so click opt out okay and then click confirm alright so now we need to um, put the APK files here remember earlier we have an APK file where, where we download from the Mobin Cube website so just click browse files and here is remember we downloaded the folder the puppet training folder so this is the APK file just upload it okay and then enter a release name we can just type version 1 or initial release Or let's just type version 1. Version 1.0. Okay, so what's new in this release? Just type here initial release. Okay, so the APK is still uploading here. You can see here it's 4% complete. So I'll just pause this video until the APK is finished uploading. Okay, so. The APK is already uploaded. We can see here it's uh, version 1. Okay, it's already uploaded here. So now we need to 
click save okay but it automatically saves so it's already saved okay so now we will go to the content rating okay let's just click that content rating okay so we need to click continue okay this is where um google will rate we need to rate our app we'll have to answer a questionnaire all right so here is the questionnaire put your email address okay and then copy it again on the confirm email address all right so select your app category so it depends on what category category of your app so for me it's um, educational and then violence can the app contain violent material so for my app it is about puppy training there's no violence there so I click no can the app contain sexual material or nudity so my app is about puppy training no language can the app contain any potentially offensive language I'll say no can the app con control substance? Can the app contain references or depiction of illegal drugs? I'll say no. Miscellaneous. Does the app natively allow users to interact or exchange content with other users through voice communication, text, or sharing images or audio? I'll say no. Does the app share the user's current physical location with other users? I'll say no. Does the app allow users to purchase digital goods? I'll say no. Okay, and then it will click. We need to click Save Questionnaire. Okay, so once the Save Questionnaire, we need to calculate the rating. Okay, just click the Calculate Rating and it will show the rating for our app. Okay, so now that there is a rating for our app, we need to go down here and then click apply rating okay click apply rating so it's already applied to our app and next we need to go to pricing and distribution here all right just click this pricing and distribution okay so we're now here in pricing and distribution okay we need to answer this so the application is paid or free so if your app is paid, you have to uh, click this, but if it's free, just click this, right? So my app is free. Okay, so now we need to answer the country's availability, okay? So there are um, 142 countries, and you have to click this available. Okay, so uh, is your app primarily directed towards children under the age of 13? I'll say no. Does your application have ads? Okay, so yes, it has ads. Device categories, Android Wear, so let's just skip that. Android TV, Android Auto, just skip that. User programs, just skip this. Okay, so marketing opt-out, just skip this. And then content guidelines, this application meets Android content guidelines, so just click this. And US export laws, I acknowledge that my software application may be subject to United States e export laws, so just click this. And then click save draft. Okay, so click here ready to publish. Okay, so your app is ready to be published. You can now publish your app by starting the rollout of release in Manage Releases page. So go click here at Manage Releases. Okay, so this is. Okay, so now we're in the app releases page. So it says you're in the production. You have a release in production that hasn't been rolled out. So we need to click edit release. Okay. And then you scroll down here and then click review. 
Okay. Okay, so it says review and roll out. Okay. Now click here, start roll out to production. This is located on the bottom part of the page. So it says here review and roll out menu. Scroll down and then click start roll out to production. Okay. Your app will now become available to all users of the Play Store. Do you want to continue? So you just click confirm. Okay. So Google, okay, it says here release 1.0 seconds full rollout. Okay. So now it's finished and Google will send you a message because um, they will manually review your app also. So just hold on a bit. I will look for the message that Google sent me. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so Google sent me an email. It says IARC content ratings, rating certificate. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Google sent me an email. Okay, so um, there, someone will review your app at Google. It will take about three hours, um, sometimes maybe one day. It depends. Okay, so um, expect it to be about um, one day, three hours, stuff like that, or sometimes it may take longer. Okay, but when it's ready, um, you can see it here. So this rating certificate is for my clean eating app. Okay, so I will show you my clean eating app is already on the Google Play Store. Okay, I will show you that it's already published. So the puppy training app that we made, it will take a while, maybe three hours, about three or more hours, okay? So I will go to Google Play Store and I will show you the clean eating app. This Google Play Store, just go to play.google.com slash store and then click apps. Okay, so my app is called Clean Eating 101. So I'll just search it. Okay, so this is the app I made. So you can see it's made by Mobi Locals. Let's just click here. Okay, so this is my app. It's already in Google Play Store. Okay, so this is my app, Clean Eating 101. These are the screenshots. This is why Google is asking for screenshots because it will show in the App Store. Okay, so this is my description. Okay, these are my description. Okay, so that is how you submit an app to Google Play Store. Hi guys, so today I'm going to teach you how to create the graphics for your app. Okay, so the Google Store requires you to have screenshots. Okay, and they also require you to have a high resolution icon and the feature graphic okay so the high res icon dimension is 512 by 512 pixels and the feature graphic should uh, measure 1024 by 500 pixels okay so you need all this feature uh, graphics right so I will teach you how to make this so first uh, we have to go to canva.com okay so canva is our resource for making designs okay okay so first of all um you have to go here at the right upper corner click use custom dimensions okay and then put there 512 by 512 and click design so this is the measurement of the high res icon. If it's not that measurement, Google Play will not accept it. Okay? It needs to be 512 by 512. All right. So let's put a background. Let's go here at the left corner and click background. And we can add a background color. Okay? Um we can also use uh different designs here at the bottom. Okay? These are different textures 
and we can also upload our own background so we can do this by clicking here upload on the left side and then click upload your own images okay so we can choose here okay so I actually uploaded this already earlier see it's still processing here but uh, we can use this so we need to drag it here okay drag it here and then we can resize it okay so that's one way okay but for our purposes I just want to use a plain background color so let's just um, use blue and since our app is about puppet training then I will type here on the search bar dog okay so um, different images of dogs will show up and some are free some are paid so you can see here free free okay if we scroll down below there are also paid pictures okay so you can see here this is one dollar okay so if you drag it here okay this is a paid um, photo but there's a watermark okay so if you pay the one dollar then the watermark will be removed okay so let's delete that so I'm just gonna use a free picture here okay I'm just gonna use this icon and then resize it okay I'm gonna resize it and I want to add a text so let's click here text on the left side and click add heading okay so I'm gonna type there puppy training okay but I want the font to be different so this is Abril fat face I want this to be Fredoka one okay so you can choose there are lots of fonts available but I like this font okay so this is finished and just click download and just download this okay just download this and that is one example okay so I will teach you another way of making an icon so let's just close this for now okay so here um, is a logo okay let's click logo okay so here at the logo you can see there are many designs but the logo size is 500 by 500 okay it's not enough to be 512 by 512 it is 500 by 500 so there are two ways we can do this um, you can choose a logo and you can resize but you have to pay okay you have to pay canva for work you have to pay about 15 dollars to resize it and um one technique i will teach you is um, you design um, your logo or your icon here for example like this um, let me just choose for example like this okay and then you download it okay so click download and then once you save that okay you will create here a uh, use custom dimension so just click here use custom dimension and then type 512 by 512 and then click design okay so what we will do is we will remember that we download the logo right so just click here upload upload your own images so see this logo I made this using canva and its size is 512 uh, sorry it's 500 by 500 so just click it okay just wait for it to upload and then once it's uploaded uh, we can drag it here okay so you can see there's some extra white space on the sides because it's not 512 by 512 it is 500 by 500 so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this okay we're just gonna drag this so now it's 512 by 512 so we just download it okay so just click download and that is how you use the logo design even if it's not um, the required size by Google Store so it's easier if you just use a logo design 
okay and then just save it and then upload it and then use custom dimension and just resize the logo all right so the next um next graphic we're gonna make is the feature graphic okay this is a feature graphic and the size is 1024 by 500 pixels so we're gonna make a new design and we're gonna use custom dimension here okay just click it and then type 1024 by 500 okay 500 and then click design okay so there's uh, going to be a blank space here so we're gonna put again a background color okay and then we're gonna um, add a dog picture okay so this is one way of making this All right so we resize it and then we can add a text here puppy training Okay, let's make it a uh, different font. I want to make it a uh, Fredoka one. You can use other um, fonts if you want, but this is just my preference. And then we have to make it bigger. Okay, so my recommendation here, because there's an extra space here, um, let's make another subheading. Add subheading and then... Put a subtitle. Okay, so this is my recommendation. And we can change this into a different color. Okay, so. Okay, so this is one way of making a feature graphic. So if um, you're lazy, there's also another way. So let me ju let's just make another one. Okay, so. Um, this is what I do with my clean eating app. So my app is about uh, clean eating. So what I did is just this. If you, uh, you, I type, I just type a picture of a salad. Because my app is about clean eating and it involves salad. So there are free photos here and they're also paid. So I just used one of the free photos. Okay, so I just drag it here. So let's delete this. Okay, so I just drag it here and then I just drag it all the way here. Okay, so it could be as simple as that if you want to make a feature graphic or you can add some text if you want. Or you can just um, put a photo here. So the size is 1024 by 500. Okay, so that is how you make a feature graphic. And just click download. Okay, and then... Just upload it on the store listing. So now we have a high res icon and a feature graphic. So uh, the next we're gonna make is the screenshots. So there need to be at least two screenshots are required and a maximum of eight screenshots per type. So most cell phones will have a function for screenshot. You can just um, take a screenshot using your smartphone or I use CoPlayer for this. So let me just get the CoPlayer. Just hold on for a bit. Okay, so now I opened uh, my CoPlayer and then let's click to the app. Okay, so now we're gonna take a screenshot. So I do this by um, using Snip, Snip function. Um, it is free at Microsoft. So just click here at the start button and then just type Snip. If you have a Snip function, I'll just use the snipping tool, okay? So click new, and then we're gonna snip the screenshot, okay? So this is the screenshot I took using snip, so I'll just save it, okay? And then we're gonna take another screenshot because we need at least two screenshots, so I'm just gonna press this and then take a screenshot. Again, we're going to use new snip, new, okay, so I'm going to snip it again, and I'm going to save it, okay, 
and then another snip. Okay, so I'm just going to press one of these and then I'm going to take another snip. Okay, so now I have three screenshots, okay? You can make up to eight screenshots. That is up to you. It is better to have more screenshots, but you need to have at least two screenshots. So that is how you make your graphics for Google Play Store.